Luxy, Luxy. I'm not a silver watch. We're distressing me. No, AJ. Them days, Mr. Cripp. Worse. What is the tally of unsolved crimes in your division this year, Sergeant Cripp? Serious crime, sir? Um, about 40. 47, in fact, since New Year's Day. 47. How do you propose to improve on this lamentable record? Patient inquiries, sir. We investigate every possibility. When there's a development, we are poised, ready to act. Awaiting developments. Sitting in the rat catcher, poised over a glass of India pale ale. In criminal investigation, you require inspiration, intuition, flair. You may not be aware that the new director of the CID and I have made a study of the methods of the Paris Surete. Brilliant. So I've heard, sir. Patient inquiries are not enough. When your English detective can't crack a case, he puts it away in a drawer marked unsolved. Your Frenchman employs a different stratagem. Probably you are not aware of the term. Agent provocateur? Agent provocator, yes, quite. Of course it wouldn't work here. The law doesn't allow it. Conspiracy. But I look for a definite improvement in your record of arrests, Sergeant. What's a corpse worth to you, Bobby? One more body don't excite me over much, old friend. We get two or three a month jumping off Waterloo Bridge. So I've bobbed to you. I found him not ten minutes from here. Well, if it's that close, I can find him myself. Four bobs, then. And I don't need a sharp nose to tell me you've been near the whelk stalls by the river. He was murdered, Bobby. Huh. Headless corpses don't jump off bridges. Headless? From the neck up. <coughs> 48. Oh, what'd you make of that, Thackeray? Oh. Nasty. It looks as if he was done with a saw. Apart from the obvious. Well, he's no youngster. Could be about your age, Sarge. Oh, look at those muscles on him, though. Yeah, I'd say he was a labourer. A docker or a bricky. Look at the injuries, man. Old scars. On the back of his hand. Oh, so he's been pickled. All them bruises. Oh, poor beggar. Those look like spike marks on his shins. Yeah, if it made any sense, I'd say he was a fist fighter. A pugilist, and he had a set to with the knuckles before he died. Oh, knuckle fighting went out 20 years ago. Queensbury rules now, Sarge. Big leather boxing gloves. Shows how little you know about it. You can ban a sport, but you can't stop one that's been established over 150 years. Fist fighting still goes on, and plenty pay for the privilege of watching. Where, Sarge? All secret venues in the country. A match is made and word is passed round. That's why you're going to see the boxing reporters of the Sporting Life and Bells. Oh. Buy them a drink. Learn everything you can about modern pug fights. Names, locations, forthcoming events. Well, you seem to know plenty already, Sarge. What, with a name like mine? Peerless Tom Cribb, the old champion of England. Hey, Sarge, he wasn't one my of your... My family's my own affair. Now, you get on with it. And Thackeray. Sarge. Try not to lead with your chin. Inspector Jowett, sir? Ah. Uh, come in, Sergeant Cribb. I require your agreement, sir, to a novel method of investigating a murder. I've reason to believe that a corpse found in my division is that of a pugilist. 
A boxer, you mean? No, sir. Knuckle fighter. Still goes on. Not in my division, of course. But can't ignore the evidence of a headless pug, sir. And two more, according to the dead person's foul play suspected list. One last January and one the year before. Both hooked from the Thames. Now, it might be pure chance, but it could be a pretty little pattern of murder, sir. Pretty is not a word I would use to describe either murder or pugilism. I recollect reading a nauseating account of a fight between um, Sayers, was it, uh, and an American? John Carmel Heenan, sir, the Benicia boy. Remarkable memory you have, Sergeant? Oh, yes, sir. But, well, the, uh, the newspapers were full of it at the time, sir. Mm -hmm. And you believe your corpse died in the prize ring, eh? I know it, sir. <laughs> and what is this novel method of investigation that you propose, Sergeant? I'd like to infiltrate the prize-fighting fraternity, sir, gain their confidence. I might have to stand by and watch while it goes on, even appear to enjoy it. Uh, French methods, you might say, sir? Oh, quite, quite. Touché, you might say, Sergeant. Can you assure me that this is a necessary subterfuge? Absolutely fundamental to my investigation, sir. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Very well. Sergeant Cribb, I think it advisable that you exercise extreme care. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If the uniform branch got to hear of this, it could lead to a calamitous situation. Ruinous, sir. Blimey, a visiting card. Henry Jago, Constable Metropolitan Police. <laughs> Who's he think he is, then? Jago's out of the top drawer. Private tutor, public school. Got disinherited after a family quarrel had joined the force. Mm. Well, I hope he's in. Good gracious, Sergeant Cribb. He's coming, gentlemen. Excuse me. Night duty, you understand. Find yourselves a chair. Back in a moment. Oh, embrocation. Splendid for toning the muscles. Not recommended by the glass, though. Ah, Jago, how's the boxing? Oh, I try and keep up with it in my spells off duty, sir. Won a medal at the police tournament last winter. Damn near brought in a Queensbury Cup as well. Where do you train, Jago? No, no, this isn't trouble. Your knowledge of the noble art may help me find a killer. By George, that's so, sir. Well, the landlord of the anchor has a room fitted out as a gym. For fist fighting? Good Lord, no. Strictly a glove fighting establishment. Not exactly the Athenaeum. Any talk of prize fighting going on these days? Well, sometimes a whisper goes round that there's sport to be had in some quiet corner of Kent or Essex, and it's not partridge or pheasant thereafter either. The station master at Fenchurch Street spars in the anchor. He'd know by the advance sale of railway tickets. Do they know that you're in the force? Good Lord, no. Good. If they ask me what I do, I say I'm engaged in clerical work at Whitehall, which I am. More's the pity. Well, not anymore. I need all the information you can get about prize fighting. Names, times, places. Start at the anchor tomorrow morning. Oh, and by the way, from now on, you're Henry Jago, Detective Constable. By George. Thank you very much, sir. Are you perfectly clear about tonight, Sylvanus? It's agreed that you let the ox have the first knockdown and the first blood. Wait for Robert to tell you that the betting is right and then go to work on him. I want it finished inside 30 rounds. Is that understood? Understood. I warn you, we do not tolerate mistakes. Don't underestimate him, Isabel. I've never trained a better man. Believe me, the Stepney ox won't be looking for another fight after this one. People are going to respect the ebony. The only thing worth respecting is the odds we get.
Percy and them are the anchor? Good gracious, no. Not that class of man. These two wouldn't know what to do with a pair of leather gloves. Oh, I could find a use for them. First blood. Now watch the rush to bed. Oh, that's it. Go on, it? This is no sort of mill at all. You shouldn't put a novice in with the ox. The ebony isn't finished yet. There's time enough. Hard! Seconds out! On the scratch, gentlemen! thinking. Strong young fellow like you, probably trained to teach them to a lesson, eh, Jago? Perish the thought. Oh, don't be so modest. You'd have put up a better fight than the ox, I'll bet. It was over in an hour. You'd have lasted longer than that. Three. I beg your pardon, Sergeant? Allow three hours for a fist fight, lad. Plenty go to two and some have gone to four. Go on, clear out of it. Up it. Well, it's still breathing. One less for the River Thames, then. Well, you think his seconds would assist him? First things first, that's the only purse he gets tonight. When are you returning to London? What's it to you? The last train. We bring him round at the Fox and Grapes. Storm and up to spend what we got here. Bloody tight fist at this lot. Don't give any credit for a good fight. <laughs> Thanks, Gov. Get to it, Jago. Go back with them. Find out everything you can. Aren't you coming? Thackeray and I'll see where the ebony leads us. Oh, it wouldn't have been easier to go by road. You enjoying your country walk, Thackeray? Ruddy regulation boots that in water like sluice gates. But we're still with them. Let's take a closer look. Who's the best available? His record is in the champion class. Mostly straight knockdowns, too. It won't be easy to find another adversary for you. Your ribs must be sore. I'll dab them lightly for you. Nothing sore. The ox didn't touch me. <laughs> You'll soon be ready. 
and the French, and the Yankees. He took the others into the top class much too soon. I'll not make that mistake with you. Besides, I'll fight anyone, now. No need to wait, no need for fancy living and training. Draft from the window, you must not take a chill. It's nearly dark, I'd better tell Edmund to unchain the dogs. Did you hear that, Sarge? I heard enough to get us both a quick promotion if we handle this right. About the dogs. Beckett, Foster, and two others, all with criminal records. Young Jago's given us enough to hook in most of the Stepney mob on suspicion. Will you do it then, Sarge? Don't want to alert anyone at the moment. Things will begin to happen in the next week. The Stepney boys got their fingers burnt when the ox bit the turf. They must have lost a mint on side bets. From what Jago heard, they're looking for a new punching machine. Oh. They plan to make an approach to the ebony. So it looks like the ox for the slaughterhouse, then. No, no, I didn't say that. But we know three pugs has dropped in the teams without their heads on. That's what makes me think they weren't London fighters. People would have missed them from the pubs and training rooms. A week's gone by since we found our headless fighter and not a word of anyone missing. If London turns up nothing, where do we look, then? Radstock all, for a start. That woman spoke of other fighters, men who were pushed too soon to the top class. Now, suppose they were imported. Badly beaten, killed even by the Ox or some fist fighter from London. Yeah, no one asks any questions because no one knows how many fighters there are at Radstock Hall or where they come from. Well, we're going to have to find out. Jago's going to take up knuckle fighting. Is it far? Far enough. Not exactly a walking proposition then. If it was, I wouldn't be acting as bloody cabby, would I? Don't worry. You'll get exercise enough if she takes you on. Mrs. Vibart. Your wife? Oh, spare me that. Sister in law. My brother Percy was gathered last Christmas. Heart failure. Was he a knuckle fighter? He was 20 years older than Isabel. She inherited Radstock Hall and everything else he possessed. But do you continue to live there? Well, a woman can't do business with the fancy. So she keeps me on as messenger boy. And cabman. Ferocious blasted animals. If you meet them off the chain, they'll go for your throat. Come on. Come in, Mr. Jago. You must be ready for tea after Edmund's driving. He's less intelligent than my late husband and has none of his charm. Sick. You're interested in fighting professionally, I gather. That's so, ma'am. You're patently a gentleman. Where were you educated? Privately, by tutor. And your university? I had a difference with my father and decided to forego university. Really? <laughs> that was rather perverse. What did you do instead? I tried to make my way in the uh, law, rather unsuccessfully. You see... Yes, I know the rest. You met a young woman who lives in Kensington. And you wish to marry her. When your financial position improves enough for you to discuss it with her father. And so, you want to make large amounts of money from your skill as a fighter. What if your prospective father-in-law should ask where your fortune comes from? He's a sportsman, ma'am. The MCC. I should not want your new interest here to lead to an estrangement between you and the young woman. Come. There's something I want to show you. Ah. 
How many fighters are you training here? Only one at present. Was all this built for him? Oh, no. There were others. They left us, though. Who were they? I should like to see you exercise now. There are pumps and knickerbockers in the dressing room. Come here now, Henry Jacob. Go, sir. I want to examine you. Hmm. Good patrol development. Tolerable biceps. This, <coughs> I think, is the weak point. And your hands, of course. No, you wouldn't last long in a fist fight in your present condition. Let me see your back. Raise your arms. Flex them. Quite a handsome show of flesh, Isabel. Thank you, Henry. I'd like you to meet Mr. Destin, who will be your trainer. No, he won't shake hands with you. Do I gather you'll take me? I pay three shillings a day with food and lodging. When you fight, I claim half the purse. Is that acceptable? Eminently, ma'am. You need physicking. It's the first step to fitness, my friend. Strong emetic, and then purging with glorious salts. Should have your stomach clean in a week or two. Is he ready to fight me? Oh, you. Good God, Sylvanas, you must be out of your mind. Why? He wouldn't last two rounds and you know it. What's the matter, Sylvanas? Aren't you having enough attention lately? I'm a fighter. I want fights. When we have an antagonist for you on the right terms, you'll see some more action. Smart of young Jago getting word to us with his stomach pains and all. I was beyond the call of duty, suffering like that. Not sure I could face it. After two ounces of globus salts, you'd answer the call, Thackeray. Depend on it. Well, we're making progress at last. Daniel Ives went missing in Birmingham six months ago. Five foot nine, twelve stone, reddish brown hair, a former bricklayer known to be Andy with his fists. Our headless man, sir. Looks like he'd done it. Oh, lovely. Then we can arrest the Vivarts and rescue Jago from further punishment. We need more evidence. Jago stays where he is. Well, if we leave him too long, he could find himself in a fist fight. But if there's no way of replying to his letter, keep his spirits up. Well, we'll have to find a way, won't we? Lydia Boltover. I do not converse with strangers in the street. 
If you continue to obstruct my path, I shall call a policeman. Detective Sergeant Cribb, miss. Constable Thackeray, miss. You. You're the man who sent Henry away. That is correct, miss. And now we need your help. Mine? Uh, to get a message to young Jago, miss. You'd welcome the chance to write to him. Yes, but I... I'll address it. Just add a few instructions from me in your own fair hand. Is that all right? Instructions? You see, your Henry Jago is on a very important job for Scotland Yard. It's a lot of money, Mr. Vibart. It's a lot of fighting, Mr. Beckett. Good day to you. Evidence, Jago. We took a headless man from the river. What happened to the head? isn't enough. What do you mean? Something woke me up. I should have guessed it was you on your way to the new man's bed. himself on a woman, knowing he can give her no pleasure whatsoever. <laughs> Make the bridge, Jago. Jago, you have disappointed me. I told you that we keep our activities here entirely confidential. A letter has arrived for you. You must have written to her first and given her this address. Her? Your affectionate Lydia. Well, naturally, it was necessary for me to read the letter. When my fighters are in training, I can tolerate no outside interference. Mr. Jacob, you will write to your Lydia, and you will instruct her not to write again. Oh. The enemy's bolted. It's best not been stepped. I must see Edmund at once. Make Jago work for this? We may need him sooner than we thought. On your feet, Jago, up. Capital writing, though, sir. A clinker on the ivory's brought first blood and the crimson tide flowed copiously. Brings it all back, sir. You should have stopped it, Sergeant. Well, it would have ruined my investigation, sir. Mm. Did you learn anything instructive from this deplorable affray? Yes, sir. The corpse we took from the Thames was a former prize fighter named Daniel Ives. I believe he was knocked senseless in the ring, and as he was no more used to his managers, they disposed of him and others before him. By putting the bodies in the river? After making sure they couldn't be recognized. Uh, quite. Are you ready to prefer charges? Uh, not enough evidence yet, sir. I want no more bodies in the Thames, Sergeant. 
You had these people under observation? Got a man inside the house, sir. Inside, eh? That's uncommon clever. Not Constable Thackeray. Uh, oh, no, sir, no, sir. Thackeray's picking up the prize-fighting gossip from the Stepney School of Arms. Um, there's talk of a mill in Tonbridge the day after tomorrow, sir. I'd rather not be told about it, Sergeant. Well, the point is, sir, it does give us a chance to look inside the house while everyone's at the fight. I see. And your inside man? Oh, he'll be keeping up his guard, sir. I hope. Is this uh, absolutely necessary, Mrs. Vibart? You really are uncommonly tense, Henry. You're in no state to fight anyone. You need a massage at once. Do you like my bedroom? You find it difficult to relax in that little room along the corridor? On the contrary, I find it quite agreeable there. You make it sound inviting. Well, don't misunderstand me. What I mean Relax. is... Do you feel better? The muscles are becoming more supple. Oh, relax, Henry. Won't you loosen your drawers and slip them down over your hips that I might massage your thighs? You really do have a fine body, Henry. <gasps> Not a mark on it. Further massage won't be necessary, Mrs. Vibart. Well, there's a mark for you then, Casanova. <laughs> <laughs> we want no permanent injuries. Do you understand that, Sylvanus? A certain amount of blood is to be expected, but gouging is not. Show me your thumbnails. Oh. <laughs> They must be clipped. Now, what is that hold where you crook your arm around your adversary's neck and hold him while you batter his face with your free fist? So in chancery? You will not use it on Jago. Just a minute, my lady. The ability ain't fighting to your orders now. You can't dictate what punches he's to throw. Mr. Beckett, he is capable of killing a man. Do you wish to be party to manslaughter? Oh, very well, then. No suit in chancery. How many rounds? 30 or more. Thirty. The fancy won't stand for less. And the money? What about the money? Oh, yes. There's fifty on account. You get the rest in Kent when the show's over. I shall retire now and leave the details to you, Edmund. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Would you care for a drink before you go, gentlemen? That'd be nice. We can test the success of our arrangement. I'll agree to that. Now, Mr. Vibart. I left some things in my room. May I go and collect them, please? Yes, why not? Don't be long. We'll be leaving in ten minutes. Thanks again for your part in this. Thank you for keeping what? it for my sister-in-law. She's still very agitated about the ebony deserting. The ebony? Where is that? Oh, there you are. What you got there? Mrs. Vibart Silver, get a ball, man. I need some sleep tonight, even if you don't. See you in Kent tomorrow, Mr. Vibart. If I had my way, I'd shoot them. The dogs. Confounded animals. Something's disturbed them. They're under Mrs. Vibart's window. Let's ask her what's going on. Isabel? They didn't save her from the ebony, did they? Isabel. Oh, my dear. She's been dead some hours. Fifty pounds has gone from the safe. Vibart thinks the evidence done it. And he thinks he'll get away with it because we dare not bring in the law. We'll settle this our own way. Are you with me? What can we do? 
We'll go through the fighter's plan. It's our only way of catching him. Are you game, Jacob? To box with a murderer? He wouldn't back down, would he? After the fight, you'll try conclusions with the Ebony. Conclusions? Yes. They'll be catching the 1140 to Fenchurch Street and then out to Kent. Shouldn't we go after him? He won't thank us for turning up late. We've got more important business on hand than sparing Jago a few rounds in a prize ring. Pity we couldn't wave to let him know we were here. He'll get maimed for life. We don't know for sure where the ring's being set up. Or somewhere near Tombridge. Now, time to introduce ourselves to Mrs. Vibart. And five stab wounds made with a sizable blade. Whoever did this had a fair amount of blood on him. Theft, Sarge. Thackeray, we came here to look for evidence, and that's what we're going to do. The bedroom first. Ah, oh, it's Jago's room, Sarge. No point in wasting time here. I want every room searched. If you say so. Sarge, it's more than he could earn in a year. That isn't what I hope to find. First blood, first five knockdowns to you, and leave the rest of the enemy. Can we rely on him after what happened? You fight to orders. Matt Beckett will see to that. You know you're fighting under another name. It's better for your reputation as you're to be beaten. What's the name? Ives. Daniel Ives. He's one of ours once. Not anymore. Here, Sarge, we ought to have left by now. Young Jai goes counting on us. Have you searched the kitchen? Yeah, every blooming room in the house, including the cellar. Better call it a day, don't you think? Look, hadn't we better get after him? Well, you told him he could depend on you. Who? Oh. Jago. Oh, yes, time is getting on, isn't it? Can you ride? Horses and me don't get on. Cheer up, Jago. We'll be over inside two hours. Oh, watch out for the blacks right. So this is Tunbridge Hall? No, Groombridge. We switch venues in case the blues got word. Sarge, I'll never make it to Tunbridge. Damn it, Thackeray, we're not peddling all the way. I'll just have a look at the grip, Seventy, if you don't mind. I don't want a repetition of what happened in our last little meeting, do we? And the other one. And the gob, if you don't mind. Very good. And watch it. See that you are a gentleman. I must warn you. Please, Henry, persevere however long this takes. And your lives? And a little more right, gentlemen, please! Right! Time, gentlemen, seconds out! Show the scratch and shake hands! Even if we get there in time, how will you stop a fist fight? Drop off on the way and get reinforcements from the uniform branch. But who will we arrest then?
Look at the gas. Look, we agreed five rounds to get the odds right. Take it easy. It hurts me more than it hurts him. It's no matter. Just go numb after the first half hour. You're doing famously. Seven to one, Ebony. Seven to one, Ebony. You've taken a part of the fancy anywhere today? The fancy? Where's the fist fight? Broombridge, sir. They've moved it. You should have taken the branch line to Tunbridge Wells. Oh, poor old Jago. He'll never get there in time. Right, Cabby Groombridge. Stop worrying about Jago. He's probably enjoying himself. <laughs> much longer. I promise you I get here in time. The black killed her. Why should I kill her? I was free of her and all this scum. This man even helped me join the Stepney mob. I escaped from Rastock Hall. I have a future now as a champion. Not like the others. Others? Fighters. They fought for Mrs. Vibart and failed. She didn't care. She backed them to lose. <laughs> they were cut to ribbons. I was the first real fighter at Restock Hall. What happened to these men? Who knows? They served their purpose and they were removed. That's a vile accusation and an infernal lie. Well, now, let's see. What time did you say Mrs. Vibart retired last night, sir? I told you, um, early, just after 10. And this gentleman left to collect his clothes at what time? A few seconds later. And returned when? A full 15 minutes after that. He had plenty of time to kill her before they left. Agreed, sir. But in that 15 minutes, Mrs. Vibart appears to have gone to her room, undressed, washed, laid out the clothes, put on her night things, brushed out her hair, got into bed and been murdered. Now, anyone who believes that knows nothing about women. Mrs. Vibart was murdered after Beckett and the Ebony left. Jacob. Beg your pardon, sir? 
Of course. Henry Jago, the latest fancy man. Really? Isabel took a shine to Jago. I caught her creeping into his room. That's it. A lover's quarrel. And he pocketed the money for good measure. Money, sir? Well, the prize money in the safe. Didn't you search him? Well, there was nothing on Jago apart from a pair of silk drawers and a few bruises. Well, I'm afraid you're misinformed, Sergeant. Of course, he hasn't got the money with him. It's probably at Radstock Hall. Well, there is something on him, Sergeant. A scratch right across his buttocks. Hardly a fighting scar, is it? Impossible. However Jago came by this indignity, it was on behalf of Scotland Yard. No good accusing him of murder. He's a police officer. Is he by God? Investigating a matter of several headless corpses taken from the River Thames. I'm inclined to believe they were beaten to death in illegal knuckle fights, mutilated to prevent identification, and there'll be charges, gentlemen. But let's deal with Mrs. Vibart's murder first. We're left with two suspects. You, Mr. Dester, if I may be so bold, representing unrequited passion. And you, Mr. Vibart, personal gain, inheritance, in fact, two good motives. Thackeray, remind us of the injuries to Mrs. Vibart. Uh, five stab wounds in her chest, uh, left side, bruising on her left shoulder and the uh, left-hand side of her neck. Thank you. Well, it's obvious, ain't it? The murderer held Mrs. Vibart down with the left hand on her neck while he stabbed her with the dagger in his right. Now, I've always admired the way the handicapped to overcome their injuries, and Mr. Destin is a notable example. But what do you say, Mr. Destin? You killed her. You bloody murderer. <laughs> Nonsense. This is all conjecture. You have no proof. Let me settle with him, Sergeant. He's responsible for my hand as well. A gun he failed to clean. This one, sir? I removed it from his pocket. Well, Thackeray. Can I have a word with you outside? Officer, would you bring him in out, please? In God's name, man! What are you doing? He'll kill me! Well, I'll certainly charge him if he does so. Wait! Wait! I'll say whatever you want. The truth will be sufficient, sir. You wanted a word, sir? Ah, come in, Sergeant Crib. Constable. I merely wish to thank you, gentlemen, for your stout efforts in the Vibart affair. A most satisfactory conclusion to our inquiry. I'm pleased to be able to tell you, Sergeant, that I've managed to persuade my superiors that a case like this merits promotion. Really, sir? Yes. It's Sergeant Jago from now on, and very well deserved. A first-class investigation. I thought you'd both like to be here to congratulate him. Carry on, Sergeant Jago. I believe young Lydia is waiting in the outer office. Thank you very much, sir. A very nice class of policemen, that. Too many men in the force these days have rather seedy antecedents. Fist fighting and the like. And now, Sergeant Cribb. About this list of unsolved crimes. <laughs> 